Hi there. Now for this part of the question, we're told that this area S shaded here is bounded by the curve C, the Y axis and the X axis and the line L. And what we've got to do is rotate this then through two pi radians about the x axis and find the volume of revolution in this form p pi plus q pi squared where p and q are rational numbers to be determined and to do this what you'll notice is i've updated the diagram with the answers we found in the previous part of the question remember the point p had coordinates 3, 2. The line L was a normal to the curve with the equation y minus 2 equals 3 upon 2 x minus 3. And we were asked to find out where it cut the x-axis at the point Q. And it cut the x-axis at the point where x was 5 thirds and y was 0. So in order to find then the volume of revolution of this shaded area S about the x-axis, what I'm going to do is think about drawing a dotted line, say from P, right the way down to the x-axis. And then look at the volume generated by this triangle here when it's rotated about the x-axis. I'll call it T. And that's going to generate then a cone when it goes around the x-axis. And that's the reason why we're given this formula, the volume of a cone. We'll be able to use that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is work out the volume of S and T together when that's rotated about the x-axis. And then subtract the volume of the cone generated by T from the total volume and that will give me the volume generated by S. So I hope you got that. So that's where I'm going with this question. Now the volume then of the combined area when it's rotated about the x-axis we'll just call it volume okay and we'll put some subscripts down here S and T. That total volume is given by pi times the integral of y squared with respect to x. Standard formula that we should be familiar with. And that would go between the limits naught and this point here where its x coordinate would be 3. So it's going between naught and 3. Now we need to change this because we're dealing with a parametric equation. So in order to do this, what we do is we'll put the pi there and the integral. We'll forget about the limits for the moment. These limits are with respect to x. But we'll make a substitution for y. In this example, y is equal to 4 cos squared theta. So we've got all of 4 cos squared theta for y, and that is all squared. Now, for dx, we change that to dx by d theta and put in d theta there. It's as if those d thetas cancel and we're just left with the dx, okay? So we need to work on this part in a moment. But because we've now changed the integral to, or with respect to theta, we need to change these limits. And to do that, okay, we know that x is 0 for this bottom limit. So if we just put up here when x equals 0, we go to this first equation here. When x is 0, we're going to have tan theta that's going to equal 0. In other words, theta would equal 0. So that's the limit for the bottom here. And then we just take the top limit when x equals 3. So when x equals 3, doing much the same kind of thing. Substituting 3 then into here gives us 3 equals 3 tan theta, which would reduce down to tan theta equaling 1. And the inverse tan of 1 in radians means that theta is equal to pi upon 4 radians. Okay, so that new limit there is going to be pi upon 4. Bit of a squeeze, but I hope you can see that. So all we need to do now is 
move on to the next stage, which is to find dx by d theta and substitute that in. So we've got pi times our integral then going from naught to pi upon 4. And we've got here, if we square this out, 16 cos to the power 4 of theta. Now for dx by d theta, if we differentiate this, we've got 3 sec squared theta. So this is going to be multiplied with 3 sec squared theta. And that's integrated now with respect to theta. Now clearly, I need more room here, so I'm going to have to remove this, okay? So I hope you've got the idea. Remember, we're trying to head towards the volume in this format, okay? For the volume of S when it's rotated about the x-axis. So I'll just remove that, and that just gives us a little bit more space. So we've got then the volume of ST. OK, the combined area here when it's rotated about the x-axis is going to equal, well, we've got 16 times 3, which is 48. So we've got 48 pi. And then that's going to be times the integral of just cos squared theta, because remember, 3 sec squared theta is 3 over cos squared theta. So that's going to cancel out with the cos to the 4 theta here, just leaving us then with cos squared theta. And that's integrated then with respect to theta. And the limits, remember, then are 0 to pi upon 4. All right. Now, when it comes to integrating cos squared theta, we need to turn towards the double angle formula for cosine of 2 theta. So I put here, but cosine of 2 theta should be familiar with this. Cos 2a, remember, is 2 cos squared a minus 1. So in this example, it's going to be 2 cos squared theta minus 1. And we can make cos squared theta the subject here. So returning back to this, we've got, therefore, the volume of st is going to be equal to 48 pi. And in place of cos squared theta, that's going to be cosine of 2 theta plus 1, or 1 plus cos 2 theta, all divided by 2. I can pull that 2 out the front of the integral because it's a constant and that just leaves me then with integrating 1 plus cos 2 theta all with respect to theta and again going between the limits 0 to pi upon 4. So we should be able to integrate this now so we've got um, 24 pi here if we just simplify that 24 pi and then we've got Integral of 1 with respect to theta is theta. Integral of cos 2 theta with respect to theta is plus a half sine 2 theta. OK, so getting there. And that's between the limits then, 0 to pi upon 4. And if you substitute your values in, what we've got then is 24 pi here. And that's going to be multiplied with pi upon 4. And then for this next term here, doubling pi upon 4 is pi upon 2. Sine of pi upon 2 is 1. So we're just going to get a half there, plus a half. And then when we substitute 0 through, take it away, that's just going to be 0. So I'll just put minus 0 there. OK. And so if we expand this, what we've got then is 6 pi squared and then plus 12 pi. OK, so that's now the volume of ST when we join those two areas together and rotate it about the x-axis. So now we've just got to find the volume generated by T, which is going to be a cone when we spin that about the x-axis. So we'll just say the volume generated by T. OK, VT there. It's going to be, remember, the volume of a cone is a third the area of the base, which will be a third times pi r squared. And r will be this distance up here, the y value, which will be 2. So you've got a third pi r squared, third pi times 2 squared. 
times h, h the height of the cone, which will be this distance across here, from 5 thirds to 3. So 3 minus 5 thirds just gives us a total of 4 thirds, so our height is 4 thirds. And if we work this out, you end up with 16 pi over 9. So when it comes to working out the volume generated by S, it's going to be the volume generated by the combined shapes, which we just found out here, was 6 pi squared plus 12 pi. And from that, we need to subtract the volume of the cone, which was 16 pi over 9. And this tidies up to be 92 pi over 9, OK, plus 6 pi squared. And that is in the form that we were asked for. OK, so hope you've been able to follow my methods there. And that brings us to the end then of this question.